So that formula was for continuous data. Very similar formula can be used if you've got binary data. So if your outcome is a kind of just got two categories, something either happens or it doesn't, and there's two possibilities, it's then binary data. And in that case, you measure your outcome in terms of the probability of something happening. The formula is uh, quite easy to adapt. If you remember the binomial distribution, the variability is equal to probability into 1 minus the overall probability of something, proportion of something happening. So what you need to specify here is what you think the proportion might be in one group and what it might be in the other group. Or you, you say, if it was this in one group, if it was this in the other group, I would like a significant difference. So you need to sort of estimate that in advance. That can be quite difficult to do, but it's only sort of saying if this was the case rather than saying it will be the case. And the formula can be adapted in this way. So instead of a standard deviation coming in here, we've got variability according to the proportions that um, you might expect to detect differences between. So that's in terms of proportions. Sometimes it's easier to do it in terms of percentages. And it's very easy to adapt for that. Instead of the 1 coming in here, we have 100 and these p's are in terms of percentages, and so is the delta. And as the formula we had before for quantitative continuous data, it's possible to rearrange this formula, um, so it's in terms of either delta or the power. So for a given, say, number of animals or sample size, we can calculate what difference we're in probabilities we're likely to be able to detect. So you can, again, have it rearranged um, in a similar way. So just to look at an example of that, here we're setting up a study to determine if the level of a particular infection or disease differs between calves that are challenged with a virus and calves that are not. You might perhaps hope to see that those that are challenged, 70% get this particular infection. If they're not, they might pick it up from somewhere else or from some of the other calves and you might expect to see 10%. So you're saying, well, if I had this result, I want to know that there's a significant difference. The number you need to do that, put it into the formulae, we'll deal in terms of percentages here. So we have the 100 coming in and that would come out to be 6.53. So it would say seven calves per group are required to detect a statistically significant difference with here 80% power because the Z beta we've put in is 0.84 and that's the value that relates to 80% power.